Rub up your engines! State the obvious says, does not having a catalytic converter affect performance? Well, it does, and it actually makes them perform better, but it's illegal. It's against the law in the United States to drive a car that doesn't have a catalytic converter. That's federal law. But that said, states like Tennessee, Montana, ones that don't have emissions inspections, no one's testing it, so who's going to know? The only purpose a catalytic converter serves is to burn hydrocarbons so you don't pollute the air. That's the only purpose it serves, right? And they do block the exhaust somewhat with the little holes, and you lose a little bit of horsepower on them. Race cars don't have catalytic converters, for example. It's still against the law to drive them that way. Realize that you're breaking federal law, but you know it's your car, your choice. All it does is burn on burn hydrocarbons, and you actually lose a little bit of power with them on. Love of the Zool says, Scotty, the price of trucks is skyrocketed. What's your favorite pickup truck for a reasonable price? Okay, I'm assuming you're talking about new trucks, and I agree entirely. I had a guy the other day brought me, he wanted me to check it out. He brought me like a four-year-old loaded Ram truck that he paid 26 grand for, and it had like 75,000 miles. Now, I'm not a Dodge Ram fan by any stretch of the imagination. I tested it out, and it didn't have any serious problems, right? But I mean, he bought a used truck for 25 grand. I said, but why did you buy a Ram truck? He said, well, Scotty, I like loaded trucks. So the one he bought was a loaded truck. He likes all the loaded stuff, and he's towing a big old RV for the kids when they go on vacation, right? I said, but why did you buy a Dodge Ram? He said, well, you know, he said, yesterday, I went to the Ford dealer, and I looked at the Ford that I wanted that was loaded, and it was $81,000. Well, I totally agree with the guy then. At that rate, go ahead and buy the Ram for 25 grand that's loaded because the loaded Ford was $81,000. Now, it was new. If you want the most reasonable price for what you get, get a Toyota Tacoma. They can run forever. The only problem is, this is the last year that they made the V6. Now, they're going to turbo fours, which I don't like in a pickup truck. They don't last as long. They say, oh, they got all the torque and horsepower. Yeah, baloney at high RPMs. Not normal driving. They're not great for pulling boats in and out of the water and heavy loads. Four-cylinder engines aren't made for that, unless they're a diesel. And they're not diesel in the United States. Americans don't like a slow diesel, right? That's basically what you're going to have to think about. How much you're going to pay and what are you going to put up with, you know? And what do you want? You want a fully loaded truck, you're going to be screwed. You're going to pay a fortune no matter what you get new. In that case, you might want to go with one that may not be the greatest, but it's not too high mileage and it's one third or less the cost of a new loaded one. All right, family moment says getting rid of my 13 year old Nissan Rogue. So you think Toyota Corolla or Camry is a good buy? I don't want to get more than 25 grand. Okay. Well, get a Corolla then because you can get a loaded Corolla. If you want to get a Camry, 25 grand, you're going to get a stripped Camry, right? And you might not like it. Now, the Camry is going to ride better than the Corolla, but the Corolla is going to get better gas mileage. They're both going to last a really long time. My advice is road test them both. Go to a dealer and try them both out. See which one you really like and then decide, do I want to pay extra for the Camry or is the Corolla good enough for what I want? Some people are fanatics about smoother rides. They're going to like the Camry a lot better better. Some people are like, yeah, the Corolla is good enough, phenomenal gas mods. Road test them and see what you feel like. Brandon says, Scotty, I'm looking for a sporty car under 40K. Any suggestion? Well, it depends on what you mean by sporty. If you want a little sports car, get a Mazda Miata. Those things are fun to drive. They're not big race cars, but they're fun. they got a convertible top you can grab with your hand, pull it, don't have to worry about the motors and crap breaking right there. An awful lot of fun. Now, maybe you want a sporty car that goes zoom, zoom, get a V8 Mustang. They're kind of fun to drive around in, you know? And of course, what do you mean by sporty? Maybe you would like a Toyota Camry TRD. It's set up for more suspension. It's got 305 horsepower, so it's a zippy to drive around, and it'll last forever. So it all depends on what you mean by the term sporty. It means a lot of things to a lot of people, you know? Some people really think, hey, that TRD's pretty sporty. They buy it, and they love it. Jonathan Bedouin says, is it a great idea to buy a brand new Subaru WRX? Okay, you want a zippy little car, and you're buying a brand new one, it'll probably last quite some time. Not a bad idea. It beats the heck out of buying a Subaru WRX that has, you know, 150,000 miles because people tend to drive them hard. And Subaru does make their cars cheaper, like a Toyota, which will have regular gaskets on the engine. A lot of the Subarus just use silicone glue. And when they get 150, 60,000 miles or more, the glue dries up, they leak oil. You got to pull the engine out of the car and spend 15, 1800 bucks to have it resealed and put it back in again. If you don't care and you don't plan on having it at 150,000 miles, Maybe you won't care at all. And they're sporty, fun little cars to drive around. All I got to say is, if you're thinking about buying one, 
Go to the dealer and road test it and see what you think about how it runs, how it handles, and go from there. Realize that no, it's not going to go two, three, four hundred thousand miles, but a lot of people, they're happy with a hundred something thousand and they're kind of zippy little cars. Shrek Cats Cash says Honda, CRV, or Toyota RAV4, which is a better used SUV? All right, you picked the two best in the world. Now, I would say generally the RAV4 because Toyota sells more RAV4s than Honda does CRVs by a long margin. The RAV4s are the number one selling vehicle that Toyota makes, but you're talking about used. It really depends on how many miles they have and how they've been maintained. You might have some slob who had the RAV4 and changed the oil every 20,000 miles, and stepped on the gas, stepped on the brake, did burnouts and stuff, and you might find somebody who's got a CRV that really took care of it, some granny, didn't drive it much. In that case, you'd buy the CRV. You can't compare apple to oranges. You gotta look at the actual used ones that are out there. If you were talking brand new, I'd buy the RAV4 brand new. But used, different story. You gotta see what shape they're in, how many miles they got in, how they've been maintained, and then look at the overall picture and decide. You pick the two best ones in the world, so you really can't go wrong, but buy and use the cars. You got to have a mechanic like me check it out because it might be the greatest car in the world. Could have been wrecked, flooded, stolen, not maintained. And the mechanic can figure that stuff out pretty quickly. John Rambo says, 2013 Altima, broken wires to firewall. No start, key error. I repaired the wires, but still have the issue. Okay, here's the problem. I'm assuming you repaired the wires, right? Because let's face the facts. Wires are color coded. So you put the brown with red stripe to the brown and red stripe, rewire it, fine. The problem is, if they really shorted it out, they probably destroyed your computer system. The computer system of a car, all those little wires coming in, they're not really fused. They got one fuse, like a five amp fuse somewhere. But when you get actual wires that feed the computer shorting out, that will generally destroy the driver circuits of those systems, and then the car will never start. Odds are the computer was also destroyed when those wires went in. Pay a guy like me, we can tell real fast. We plug in our machines, see what kind of communication is there is lost or isn't there and then go from there because you're probably going to need a new computer and realize there's scores of little computers and cars and it could have wiped out a whole bunch of them. Why you don't want wiring shorts in the car. The computer systems will be fried. Twin Turbo Toyota says, Scotty, how do I maintain my sunroof? My 2022 Highlander V6. Don't use it. It'll last forever. It won't leak. <laughs> Every time you open and close it, well, it might not seal right. right? Well, if you are going to use it, what you want to do is you want to get a lot of the really nice silicone spray and spray the seal two or three times a year and wipe it off so it seals better and realize all sunroofs leak to some extent. They don't seal perfectly. So on the front, on each corner, there's drain holes. When you open it the whole way on the back, there's two drain holes. Every once in a while, get a little compressed air with a little nozzle, blow into each one of them, and that will blow any tiny pieces out because all sunroofs leak a little. And then those drains make it drain out under your car and they don't get inside your roof and destroy things. I never use them on the cars I have because if they get old enough, and I'm a cheapskate, I drive 20, 30 years, they really go bad and they leak and they're annoying. And then the electronics go bad. Fred Lanciano says, Scotty, I got a 62 Corvette that has blow by some oil deposits on the intake manifold. What can I do to stop the problem? Rebuild the engine. That's going to cost you a whole bunch of money. Hey, it's a 62 Corvette. Old cars would get blow by because the rings eventually wear out and it's blow by because you're building so much pressure inside the crank because the piston rings instead of sealing it and when they fire all that energy pushes the piston down to make the car go faster a lot of it escapes around the worn rings goes into the crank and then it blows oil in the only way you can really fix it is by uh, rebuilding the engine I mean it's an old car how many miles are you driving it if you want you could put a oil separator on the thing and so you'd have a little oil separator tank and instead of it getting in the engine it would fill the little tank and then you could empty that out every once in a while. I got a lot of guys do that with modern cars, right? So you could do that if you wanted, but I mean, it's still going to use oil because it, the pistons are worn and that's just what happens. And Frazier says, I got a 94 Chevy 1500. It stalls when I take it off. Runs fine other ways, but when you go from a dead stop, it stalls and sputters. Doesn't matter if the truck is cold or it's warmed up. There's no codes. And if I give it little throttle, I can ease it off. But if I flood it, it conks out. Could it be caused by a faulty EGR? Thanks. Well, it could be caused by a lot of things, including that. Now that's very easy to tell. All you got to do is unbolt the EGR valve and put a piece of aluminum, cardboard, whatever, something that's thick enough. You're not going to do it for long, so it doesn't matter. It isn't going to last long. Bolt the EGR back on 
with that blocking the hole. So no EGR is going through the valve, right? That blocks it up. If it stops doing it, it's the EGR valve. Real easy test, right? Now there's a million things that can do that. You could have a leaking fuel pressure regulator. You could have leaking fuel injectors. You know, he said the truck's got 230,000 miles. Could easily be leaking fuel injectors. I can't think it's a vacuum leak because you said if you ease it, it goes, and if you floor it, it doesn't. It'd be the opposite. If you had a vacuum leak, you floor it'd be better and if you eased it the little suction would continue to crap out so I don't think it's a vacuum leak you got some kind of fuel coming in there check the EGR valve first because if it's bad it could do that you know it'd be sucking all that stuff in more often it's a leaky fuel pressure regulator or a leaking fuel injector you could check for that so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell